Everybody, this is Nate. I'm on the road. I'm actually in the town of Reserve, New Mexico, right now, which is the county seat of Catron County. Very small town in a very small county, at least population wise. Catron County is one of the most remote areas of New Mexico. It's, I think, it's the second largest county in terms of area, but the third smallest in terms of population density. And if I remember correctly, the only ones that are smaller are out in by the Texas Panhandle, which is just plains area, right? It's just ranches and stuff so it's a mountainous area very remote um those who have maybe followed my youtube channel saw that i was kind of interested in the guadalupe mountains region i was interested in uh, the boot heel region i was actually leaning towards doing guadalupe peak wind mountain and uh maybe one other new mexico p2k in that area this weekend and then i got a message from a fellow youtuber ultra mountainist Last week, he was uh, he invited me out to do Maple Peak. So that's kind of the goal of this trip is to hike Maple Peak, which is in this uh, southwestern New Mexico area. I'm also going to try to hit two more New Mexico P2Ks. Where I'm driving right now is to Brushy Mountain, which is in uh, near the town of Mule Creek, which I think is a really small town. Um, and then Sunday, it's Friday right now. Tomorrow, we're going to do Maple Peak. Sunday, hoping to do Eagle Peak. I just passed the road up to Eagle Peak. There's a lookout tower at the top. But this area has been hit with a ton of snow, so that could be really interesting. I'm gonna get back on the road, probably stop for gas in Alma. Uh, see you soon. Turning now onto the radar station road, which is uh, the summit of Brushy Mountain. So, you know, there's snow on the road, which I wasn't expecting. The snow reports didn't, I mean, I don't really trust the snow reports anymore. Uh, it's, but they, they show no snow in the area. I don't think it'll be a big deal if we get, if it gets a little sketchy, we'll get out and walk. But obviously a, a car has driven here pretty recently. So I think we'll be able to make it pretty close to the top. We might get out and walk just, you know, out of principle, you know, say we actually hiked up the mountain instead of just driving up to the top. All right, so behind me is a fence and then that goes up to the actual summit. There's a little bit of a, it's not a really clear sign behind me. It basically says something to the effect of uh, don't interfere. It's an active FAA communication site and don't trespass. But it's not clear whether the fence is the point where if you go beyond that, you're trespassing. Because uh, it's not really, I mean, obviously a human can easily walk through this uh, unimpeded. So, uh, in case it is trespassing and it's a federal crime, I'm obviously not going to film it for YouTube. If you come up here, you know, I, I can't say to do one thing or another, but uh, maybe check with the forest rangers first. Uh, unfortunately, where I am right now, it's pretty tree covered. I've gotten a few views here and there, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is kind of drive down the peak. And um, since, the, since the road kind of goes around, there were a lot of nice views on the peak. I'll get out there and that's where I'll kind of identify all the areas. I think if we could go up to the actual summit, we'd get some better views, but uh, I don't really want to deal. I don't really want to go into this legal mire of what's a crime and what's not. So let's head out.
we're really close to the catwalks, which is a super cool feature in the Gila National Forest that I've never been to. And I figured maybe I'd save that for another day, come with my family, but I mean, I'm right here and it looks, it's so easily attainable that I figured I'd just do it now. So we're gonna head to the catwalks, which is near the town of Glenwood where I got gas. Or you're, you happen to be in the factory where that laptop's being put together in a different country. about noon made it to the catwalk recreation area of course like all national forest service fee sites they're they're unmanned and it's like three dollars to get in but i only have 20s there's a little qr code which is sort of humorous given that i haven't had signal for the majority of this trip so uh just uh yeah you, you can thank me america for that extra 17 dollars so we're gonna walk down. I don't really know that much about the catwalks other than it's like an old mining area. And they used to, they had like a pipe that would funnel the creek into town before it dried up. And that's why it's called catwalk. But anyway, we're gonna walk around. Well, the sign said the trail is closed half a mile ahead, which is really disappointing. One, because, well, I would like to see the catwalks and two, I just paid $20 to be here. There's really something they should tell you over by the fee station. So hopefully we still get to see the catwalks. Fortunately, here's where my trail ends. But it looks like the catwalks portion is over. That was pretty cool. Really big fan of that. This is definitely one of the cooler trails I've ever done, though it did give me sort of flashbacks to the Nusiak Trail in Eastern North Carolina, which are not good flashbacks to have if you've ever done that trail, which is unlikely, but maybe you have. And yeah, definitely I recommend it. I mean, it's not much of a hike, so I guess it's good for kids and for people who otherwise can't hike very far. But I think I'll, I think I'll scratch the hiking itch tomorrow. Got about an 11 mile hike tomorrow. And then, well, the hike Sunday really depends on how far I can get up that road. The amount of snow that was on Brushy Mountain, just makes me think it might be a long, long hike, a long snowshoe. But I'm gonna head back to the car now and uh, go find somewhere to make camp near the trailhead for Maple Peak. Support also comes from the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, working to enhance public understanding of science, technology, and Okay, we, I drove towards the trailhead for Maple Peak. Basically our plan, my the plan I made with Ultramontanist, I have no cell signal by the way, so I cannot get a hold of him. Um, the plan that we made was I was probably gonna camp at the trailhead and then if he felt like the road was navigable in his uh, Honda Civic, he would meet me there. Otherwise, if he wasn't here by a certain time, I'd go back and get him. The trip reports kind of indicated that like this was not that bad of a road and really it doesn't look like that bad of a road. But I think all the snow that you see everywhere else melted on the road and made the road kind of muddy. There's definitely no way in a Honda Civic he's going to be able to get anywhere near I did. So what I'm kind of looking at right now is what is the point of camping at the trailhead when I know I'm going to have to drive 11 miles or more or eh, probably more like 8 miles, 8 miles back to go get him. I'm kind of thinking what I'm going to do here is drive back and either camp on the other side of the, because the road only gets really muddy after it's not being maintained by the county anymore. So I either I'll camp around there if I see a campsite, or I know that there is a car camping site near the town of Glenwood, and then I'll meet him at the trailhead and we'll head out tomorrow. Okay, found a campsite that was, uh, it's much further, much closer to where I'm probably gonna have to pick Ultramontanist up tomorrow, but uh, not 
a developed campground or anything. It's just dispersed camping. There's a fire ring there, though I don't know if I'm even going to be able to find any wood. I'm sure I will. Uh, I kind of hate it. <laughs> Not going to lie. This is a terrible campsite. Uh, there's some private property down this way, so I, it feels kind of weird. Like, people live there, and I'm going to be camping, like not too far away from their house. I don't know. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. I kind of hate it. Um, it smells like cow shit. Uh, there's a lot of cows out here. Actually think that private property is a cattle ranch. All right, I wish washed so much. I just decided I hated that campsite and I was going to keep going down the road, see if I found something better. This is not, you know, the Ritz Carlton of campsites, but it, it, I think it's a lot better than the one before. I'll take you on a little tour. Lion prints, maybe. Nice little secluded fire pit right here. Obstructed by the trees, but some view of the mountains. Without a doubt say that paid off. There's even a cool slot canyon over here. Well, maybe slot canyon is a bit of an exaggeration, but there's a canyon, so I'm walking over to it now. I think the canyon goes down maybe a few hundred more yards but i know that where i originally had my car that i think is the continuation of this wash it was completely dry and there certainly wasn't any pretty canyon so it's a nice little oasis we got here certainly wouldn't drink or play in the water not just because it's probably in the upper 40s or lower 50s right now but it's also quite the preponderance of the mexico state animal the cow I will see you guys tomorrow for Ascent of Maple Peak.